Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're finally going to be talking about the new album from Brad Paisley, titled Moonshine in the Trunk. So I want you all to imagine for a second here that you're a world famous country music singer. Easy enough, I know, it's a common experience for us all, but imagine that you've managed to release a series of critically well received records, albums that have straddled commercial and critical appeal, and yet you want to go further. You want to push the boundaries of country music while still maintaining a certain amount of commercial accessibility to country radio. Now you You've already released a well-received instrumental album, but you're not willing to give up that much airplay to be that weird, at least not in your instrumentation. In the meantime, you're getting kind of stuck in the genre that you're in, and you're very quickly getting bored with it. So. What do you do? Many critics have hypothesized that this is the internal dichotomy that Brad Paisley has been struggling with right now. He's been struggling with it for the, almost the past decade. Ever since the mid-2000s, he's been straining and pushing against the edges of what is traditionally defined as mainstream country, adding more instrumentation and different songwriting subjects, which culminated in last year's album, Wheelhouse, a release largely overshadowed by Accidental Racist with LL Cool J, a song attempting to tackle race relationships and managing to piss off everyone. But people who have followed this review series for a while likely know that I didn't dislike Wheelhouse as an album. It's not bad. In fact, it featured two songs that featured very highly on my year-end list of my favorite songs of the year, Karate and Southern Comfort Zone. And there were other songs on that album that were pretty damn close to making that list too. The fact is that Brad Paisley as a songwriter, he's still got a knack for a ridiculously catchy hook, a decent bit of lyrical nuance when he tries, and some interesting instrumentation in production. If he releases an album, the least thing that I can say is that it's not going to be boring, and that's a plus. But even though I wasn't all that impressed by his debut single from this album, Riverbank, I made sure to give his new album, Moonshine in the Trunk, a lot of attention. How's the album? Okay, this is frustrating because if we follow the story of said artists straining against the boundaries of country music and all that, Moonshine in the Trunk is the half-hearted attempt to just say screw it and find a comfortable fit within the genre regardless. And you know what? There are enough moments on this album that show that he's still wanting to push those boundaries of country music even further. In other words, this is a record defined by its central contradiction. Half jokey and silly party songs fill a broad comedy that honestly Brad Paisley could probably do in his sleep, and the other half gestures a lot more earnest and a lot more sincere that are a fair bit stronger and really highlight how half assed the rest of the album feels. In other words, it's definitely not one of Brad Paisley's stronger records, and it's nowhere near near the genre pushing subject matter and sound that defined Wheelhouse. An album that might have had a lot more failed experiments than this one did, but it sure as hell tried a lot harder. It aimed higher and it often scored higher. So okay, let's start with Brad Paisley himself. Honestly, he's a good country singer, not a lot of complaints here. Easy charm and charisma, real sincerity when he needs it, and he's had a long, had a good handle on his brand of cornball humor. Honestly, yeah, perhaps a little bit too good of a handle, because even for a guy who can tolerate a fair number of ridiculous corny jokes, this album pushes it for me, and Brad Paisley's tone alternating between being a little bit too exaggerated and nonchalant to the point of not trying at all, that can get a little bit exasperating for me. What this means is that there's a few songs where it's a little bit tricky to tell whether or not Brad Paisley is joking or not. Like on 4WP, a song that feels straight out of the bro country playbook, but it's played so broadly with these squelching synths and percussion and Brad Paisley sampling himself and actually using the word jorts within the song, hard to tell whether or not it's a joke or not. On the other hand, you have got the more acoustic leanings of the Emmy Lou Harris duet Gone Green, where Brad Paisley's a little bit more restrained and the social commentary is sharper, and yet you could imagine the whole environmentalist red next situations in the song to be almost comical, even though that song might actually have a real point behind it. Now granted, even when you can tell this album is going for humor, it's not exactly clever. It more goes for broad slapstick, if anything, not helped by lyrics that can feel pretty damn clunky on occasions. The opener, Crushing It, and the Carrie Underwood duet, High Life, they really fall into this category. The latter song ending with the equivalent of a Chick-fil-A commercial, as both artists talk about what they like at said restaurant that Brad Paisley scammed in the story of the song. And what's frustrating is that there are a few moments where this album does approach some pretty solid vibes until you start asking a couple questions. Let's take the title track, for instance. It's really got this great driving beat and a lot of energy with lyrics that were called the Dukes of Hazard until you realize that the entire song is just him and his girl pretending to be Outlaws of Moonshine. They actually mentioned in the song that they are pretending, they are putting on a face here. And 
I don't know, why'd you actually just go out and write the song from that perspective? It could have been easier. Cover Girl has a similar issue, as it tells the story of a girl becoming a Cover Girl celebrity and the paparazzi following her around and basically getting shoved out of the spotlight. But there's no payoff first to all the setup, so it ends up feeling like we're only getting two-thirds of the story. Honestly, when Brad Paisley keeps things a little bit more simple, like on the party song Limes, the more sentimental love tracks Perfect Storm and You Shouldn't Have To, and the incredibly earnest hopefulness of American Flag on the Moon, he gets to be a little bit better here. Although I will admit that the last song is a real soft one for me because I've got a soft spot for songs featuring space age optimism. And you know what? To Brad Paisley's credit, he can sell these sort of songs pretty much effortlessly because he's a natural populist, so he's kind of hard to dislike, even on songs like Shattered Glass, which is basically screams like a song that's destined for a duet with a final contestant on his TV show, Rising Star. And like all scene competition songs, it's aggressively bland. Now, of course, the other element in Brad Paisley's favor is his production instrumentation, where my biggest concerns going in were on this record. And those of you who were concerned that the synthesizers and the drum machines are going to be cropping up all over here, yeah, they do, and I'd be lying if I said they were always cohesive, but if we're looking for an album that can incorporate electronic elements and do it reasonably well, I look at Moonshine in the Trunk, and for two reasons here. The fact that Brad Paisley always, always keeps the melody at the forefront, and he's not afraid to use rougher tones in the drum machine and the guitars. That heaviness gives the mix a surprising amount of balance and texture, and while there are points where I, the kind of production feels a little bit compressed, it often feels surprisingly cohesive. It works for me. The title track might start off with sampled fragments until the guitars and the banjos and the fiddles jump in for a quick paced rollicking song that's got a lot of energy behind it. And songs like Limes and Riverbank, they pull off a similar balance and mostly makes them work. The instrumentation only suffers when the melodies get a little bit too conventional and lazy, which does happen. But you know, even by that standard, Brad Paisley's not afraid to throw in a good guitar solo to spice things up, which is more than many of his other people in the genre can say. But here's why I'm ultimately a little bit disappointed with this album. Because for all of Brad Paisley's frustrations with the state of modern country and his desire to expand the boundaries in the genre. There are moments where he touches into something that's really different and actually kind of works. Even though Perfect Storm starts out with these synth lines and a bit of a sandy percussion feel, the track has a phenomenal production balance and a bigness that's a natural fit for Brad Paisley's earnest power. And the rumbles of thunder at the end of the chorus, they're great musical punctuation. And okay, yeah, I'll admit the child choir in American Flag of the Moon, it's cheesy as hell. But the song's got a lot of spacey production, subtle reverb, and echoing melodies that give it a ton of real power along the line of, say, like Dirk's Bentley song, Here on Earth, that came out earlier this year. What these songs show is that Brad Paisley, if he wanted to push the country sound forward, he's honestly got a template that showcases melody, allows the incorporation of modern sounds, it's a real perfect fit for his vocals, and yet he spent the album making bad jokes and effectively running on autopilot, and that's my biggest issue with Moonshine the Trunk. Now, sure, I respect that Brad Paisley, he can do whatever he wants with this album, and if you wanted to kick back and make that party album, fine, I'll judge it on that merit. And you know what, on that level, the album is pretty good and generally enjoyable. But when you put it on the same record as songs that actually strive for something bigger and actually manage to stick the landing, the party feel of this album becomes a lot more hollow and a lot less satisfying. But you know what? <sighs> Moonshine in the Trunk does ultimately fulfill its intentions on this record and does deliver pretty well. So I'm giving this album a very light 7 out of 10. But you know what? <sighs> Man, Brad Paisley's capable of better. I just wish he showed more of it. <sighs> so yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Um, if there's anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation or any other albums coming out that you want me to take a look at, I'd be more than happy to give them a listen. Until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.